I am sitting here today with a woman that I deeply respect, someone who is a friend that has challenged me to think more critically about myself, my art, the way that I show up for the city, someone who I believe will be an incredible, incredible mayor and who I am endorsing fully. She is a leader in our community. She has worked with youth. She shows up for the people that are the most marginalized and the most affected. And I just think she's incredible. Nikita Oliver. Let's get right to it. Why are you running for mayor? Really what uh, moved me and motivated me was post the election. A lot of organizers started getting together and talking because we started to feel a sense of political apathy around us. Um, you know, the election of 45 and everything that's transpired since that has really made a lot of people feel powerless. And as organizers and movement builders, we started thinking, what can we do to actually build our power base here locally and really address the substantive issues that are impacting our city? Right. It was right after the Muslim ban had happened mm -hmm. and over 3,000 people showed up at the airport. And I went to a meeting with Councilmember Larry Gossett and some advocates from the immigrant and refugee community. And I was doing some policy analysis work, helping them see what are the gaps between King County and the city that make it so that we're actually not a sanctuary city. And uh, at the end of that meeting, one of my aunties says to me, you are really good at this. I think that you should consider really being our candidate for mayor. And yeah. And it was a young person who came up to me a few days later and said, my auntie said, you're running for mayor. And I looked at him, I said, your auntie said that, huh? And he was very excited. So I said, what would that mean to you? And he started to tell me, you know, I trust you. I see you in our community. Yeah. Um, you have integrity, you're authentic. I know how and when you'll show up. I know what to expect from you, but more importantly, I see you. And uh, it was really that conversation uh, going to bed that night thinking, okay, maybe I should really consider this. And of course, like all mama's girls, I had a conversation with my mom and she was like, I think you should do this. And so I went back to our group and I said, okay, I will run for mayor, but I have uh, one requirement. And it's that we really do build the Seattle People's Party as a mechanism, not just to run more people for office, but to hold people accountable when we get them elected to be public servants, because too often have we seen people get into office and instead of changing the office, the office changes them. Right. And so uh, that's how we arrived to where we are. And um, it's really not about me as much as it is about me. Uh, it's about the work that the community is doing and what's been inspiring about it. It is literally a community effort. Um, everything from the fundraising to the door knocking, the ground game, the literature development. I mean, we've been almost 100% volunteer up until June 1st. That's amazing. Who do you wish to represent? You know, I think uh, one of the struggles with our current political system is we have career politicians in office who in a lot of ways are more beholden to corporations and developers and power than they are to actual people that are impacted by the policies that they enact. And uh, part of the reason why I, I believe our community or the community that I'm closely tied to asked me to run was because I am in close relationship with the people in our city that are most impacted by the affordability crisis when it comes to housing. Um, I've had instances in my life where I was without a home. So when we talk about the state of emergency around homelessness, I have personal experience with that. Or our education system being $74 million in debt or police accountability and criminal uh, legal reform. These are all issues that I personally feel, but also I'm very closely tied to the people who are most impacted, the people at the mar margins and the people often pushed to the bottom in our city. Um, and so I wish to represent our whole city I choose to do it in a way that centers the most marginalized and disenfranchised, the most vulnerable in our city, because I deeply believe that when those folks are cared for, when those communities are cared for, our Seattle community as a whole is going to be much healthier. Mm -hmm. What do you say to the people that aren't the most impacted? You know, as our city becomes wealthier and more homogenous, I think in the long run, all of our families end up missing out on what it means to have a diverse, healthy city. Mm. And what that lends to us as a city that strives to be one of the most progressive in the United States. Uh, and we can't 
it's undeniable that there are real systems and institutional issues that we're facing nationally. And for Seattle to truly be a leader when it comes to progressive policies and progressive implementation and being a city that isn't just about progressive words, but is about progressive acts, progressive deeds, we need to have leadership that understands what it means to have an intersectional view of um, solution building and problem solving. And I think that that does serve the interest of the folks that you're talking mm -hmm. about. And one of the things that our city is struggling with is we keep talking about wanting to be a sanctuary city or what we're also calling a welcoming city, but how can you be a sanctuary city if the people who most need sanctuary cannot afford to live here? Mm. So if we want to be able to align with our values, with our actions, it really does require centering, centering the most marginalized and the most disenfranchised, the most vulnerable in our city so that we can have that diverse, healthy, progressive city. And in the long run, that does add to public safety. And while it may not always feel like it serves someone's interest immediately, mm -hmm. in the long run, I think we'll be able to look back and say, wow, that really did actually make our city as a whole healthier and more diverse. How does working in law and as an educator affect how you wish to run for mayor? Well, part of the reason that I got a law degree and a master's of education at the same time was so that I could figure out how to think clearly about systems transformation. The things that I've studied has allowed me to think through things like the school to prison pipeline. On the one end is the prison, but on the other end is the school. So how do we actually dismantle that pipeline, but even more importantly, build pipelines to other opportunities so we can see families access those, see young people access those. Uh, and so in the place that our city's in right now, to address the state of emergency around homelessness and the affordability crisis, we really have to start thinking about the ways in which all of these systems are interconnected. And what do we do to get out of the crises in the state of emergency, but what do we do to prevent it? And part of that is about educational opportunity. Part of that is about the policies we develop and how ultimately those are implemented and who they impact. And so um, as mayor, my goal is to really break down the ways in which our systems all inter interact and are interrelated, and then to figure out how we transform those with solutions. You show up, you work with youth. I've seen it on a first-hand basis of how you engage with our community, with our elderly population. You have authored ordinances that the city has passed. You are someone that is active in Seattle amongst the people. Yet, this question of experience comes up often. What does leadership mean to you? Yeah, you know, um, when I get asked that question, I often try to think about what do people consider relevant experience when they look at someone who is running for political office. And I think we tend to treat that as being career politician experience, that right. you've taken a particular pathway to getting elected to public office. Right. I'm not a career politician, and that's very intentional, um, but I am a person who has a lot of experience working alongside communities, working alongside electeds, helping develop and write ordinances and resolutions that not only sound really nice in policy and word, but actually have practical implementation that serves the people that they were intended to serve. And so when I think about leadership, and what I think we really need right now is we need a coalition builder in our city. We are needing to bring developers and corporations to the same table as people who are being displaced from their homes or from their neighborhoods, the same table as people who want to keep their single family zoning. We need to bring them to the same table with folks who are experiencing homelessness, with the most vulnerable populations in our city, especially our elders and our seniors, ensuring that, that they have places that they can live. And what that means is being able to figure out how folks who all have, seem to have different interests other than seeing a healthy Seattle, um, how do we all move forward? The work that I've done as a coalition builder, partnering with community members and electeds who often sit on very different sides of the aisle, I think is really pertinent right now. But even more importantly, I am well aware that no mayor does this job on their own. Right. Um, a mayor is only as good as the team that they bring to the table. and. I firmly believe in hiring the right folks to do the job that you need to get done, giving, the giving them the resources to do it, 
and establishing what the vision, the values, the accountabilities, and the metrics are, and saying to someone, all right, now do the job that you came here to do. And that's the sort of leadership that I intend to bring to the city of Seattle, where we have over 11,000 workers. Our next mayor will get to negotiate all of the union contracts for those workers. And so we're actually at a really important, pivotal time of seeing our city government become um, a shining example of what it means to make sure that all workers have a living wage, fair working conditions, and opportunities to grow in their, in their roles. And so I'm actually really excited to bring to the table a new type of experience that I think is, is really necessary for Seattle to make strides towards being the truly progressive city that we want to be. Well, Nikita, thank you so much. You inspire me every time that we kick it. I think that you are the right choice for the job. Thank you. Paid for by Nikita Oliver. Star Wars or the Labyrinth? Uh, the Labyrinth? Thank you. David oh, Bowie. I was about to take away I my love endorsement. That movie. Yes. That's incredible. Yes, thank you. Actually, can I admit something to you right now? I've never seen Star Wars. None of them? None of them. Not a single one? I just keep watching The Labyrinth. There's one question that everyone wants to know the answer to. Uh-oh. What is it? Wild Waves or Enchanted Village? You know, I struggle to answer this question because every time I've ever been to Wild Waves, it's usually with a whole lot of young people. Okay. And so I sit by the wave pool and I watch to make sure that none of my babies stay underwater for too long. Yes. Because the people who they're actually the babies of want me to bring them back alive. Mm. So it is really hard for me to say because usually my anxiety level is like it's not up to here. It's not fun. It's I've not. never had fun at Wild Waves. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. It's a lot of lines. Is it? I wasn't in the lines. I was at yeah, the wave pool. The wave I was pool. just watched mm -hmm. like... You know, because I, I, in high school, like, did a little bit of lifeguard training. So I kind of remember how to, like, get out there and then come back with a person. Like, there's some, like, special yeah. stroke you're supposed to do. Is it crawl stroke? I have no idea what it's called. Is it no, the that's, butter not, that's, that's not how you come back with a person. <laughs> <laughs> We're all both drowning if that's how you try to come and save me from the water. And this is why I'm endorsing Nikita Oliver. This isn't how you come back with the person. <laughs> <laughs> the vulnerable person in the water. They're on your neck, they're on your back, and you're pulling one of these. It's not what you do. Don't do that in a no. music video. Paid for by Nikita Oliver.